simple prostatectomy. Surgical technique. Retropubic prostatectomy. Proper positioning of the patient once anesthesia has been induced. The patient is positioned on the operating table in a supine position with his umbilicus over the break in the table. If a cystoscopic examination is to be performed, the patient is prepared and draped in the usual manner for a transurethral diagnostic procedure. Flexible cystoscopy, in this situation, will obviate major repositioning of the patient. After the cystoscopy, the table is extended maximally and placed in a mild trendlimb position. This maneuver will increase the distance between the umbilicus and the pubic symphysis and give optimal exposure to the retropubic space. Incision and exposure of the prostate The suprapubic area is shaved, prepared, and draped in the usual sterile manner. And no. 22 FR urethral catheter with a 30 ml balloon is passed into the bladder and connected to a sterile closed drainage system, and the balloon is inflated with 30 ml of saline solution. A lower midline incision is made from the umbilicus to the pubic symphysis. It is deepened through the subcutaneous tissue. The linear ulba is incised, allowing the rectus abdominis muscles to be separated in the midline. The transversalis fascia is incised sharply to expose the space of retius. At the superior aspect of the wound, the posterior rectus abdominis fascia is incised above the semicircular line to the level of the umbilicus. And the peritoneum is now mobilized cephalid, starting at the pubic symphysis and being swept anterolaterally. The pelvis is inspected for any abnormalities, and the anguinal area is examined for hernias. If such a hernia is identified, it can be repaired using the preparatoral approach described by Schlegel and Walsh, 1987. A self-retaining bowel forward tractor is placed in the incision and widened. A well-padded, malleable blade is connected to the retractor and used to displace the bladder posteriorly and superiorly. Unlike an anatomic radical retropubic prostatectomy, the balloon of the catheter is not positioned beneath the malleable blade. Instead, it is allowed to rest at the level of the bladder neck and aids in identifying the prostatovesicular junction later in the operation. The prostate and the anterior surface of the bladder is exposed. Using Debakey forceps and Metzenbaum scissors, the preprostatic adipus tissue is gently removed to expose the superficial branch of the dorsal vein complex and the puboprostatic ligaments figure 411. Hemostatic maneuvers before proceeding with the nucleation of the prostatic adenoma, it is important to achieve complete control of the dorsal vein complex as well as the lateral pedicles of the bladder neck, the main arterial blood supply to the prostate gland, Walsh and Desterling. 1990. To accomplish this task, the endopelvic fascia is incised laterally and the puboprostatic ligaments are partially transected, similar to the maneuver in an anatomic radical retropubic prostatectomy, Ray Inner and Walsh, 1979. In patients with marked prostatic enlargement, this maneuver can be easier because if enlarged prostate gland protrudes out from beneath the pubic symphysis. A 3 to 0 monocle suture on a circle tapered needle is passed in the avascular plane between the urethra and the dorsal vein complex at the apex of the prostate and tied figure 41 to a. The superficial branch of the dorsal vein at the bladder should be coagulated or ligated. At this point, Attention is focused on securing the lateral pedicles at the prostatovesicular junction. The 30 ml balloon of the catheter is used to identify the junction between the bladder and the prostate. The balloon is then deflated, and a chromox suture on a large CTX needle is used to place a figure of 8 stitch deep into the prostatovesicular junction at the level where the seminal vesicles approach the prostate gland bilaterally. See figure 41 to B. With this maneuver, the main arterial blood supply to the prostate adenoma is controlled. Having secured the dorsal vein complex earlier, the major sources of hemorrhage for this operation have been eliminated.
Enucleation of the adenoma with a sponge stick on the bladder neck to depress the bladder posteriorly, and no. 15 blade on a long handle is used to make a transverse capsulotomy in the prostate 1.5 to 2.0 cm distal to the bladder neck figure 41.3. The superficial branch of the dorsal vein complex is transected as the transverse capsulotomy is made. It does not bleed because the dorsal vein complex has previously been controlled both proximally and distally. The incision is deepened to the level of the adenoma and extended sufficiently laterally in each direction to permit complete enucleation. A pair of Metzenbaum scissors is used to dissect the overlying prostatic capsule from the underlying prostatic adenoma. Once a well-defined plane is sufficiently developed, the index finger can be inserted between the prostatic adenoma and the capsule to further develop the plane laterally and posteriorly figure 41.4. A pair of Metzenbaum scissors is then used to incise the anterior commissure from the bladder neck to the apex, separating the lateral lobes of the prostate anteriorly. The posterior prostatic urethra is exposed, and the index finger is inserted down to the volumenum. The mucosa of the urethra overlying the left lateral lobe is divided sharply at the level of the apex under direct vision without injury to the external urinary sphincter. With the aid of a Babcock clamp, the left lateral lobe is removed safely. This maneuver is then repeated for the right lateral lobe. If a median lobe is present, the overlying mucosa is incised at the level of the bladder neck and this lobe is removed figure 41.5. In this manner, the entire prostatic adenoma is removed with preservation of a strip of posterior prostatic urethra. Because the capsulotomy was a transverse rather than a longitudinal incision, there is little risk that the incision will be inadvertently extended into the sphincteric mechanism during the enucleation process, which would compromise subsequent urinary continence. The prostatic fossa is now carefully inspected to ensure that all of the adenoma has been removed and that hemostasis is complete. If hemorrhage is persistent, a 4-0 to chromic suture can be used to place a figure of 8 stitch in the bladder neck at the 5 and 7 o'clock positions. When placing these stitches, it is necessary to visualize the urethral orifices, so that they are not incorporated into the stitches. Indigo carmine dye may be given intravenously to aid in the visualization of the urethral orifices, if this is necessary. If the bladder neck appears obstructive at the completion of the operation, it may be appropriate to perform a wedge resection at the 6 o'clock position and advance the bladder mucosa into the prostatic fossa. The maneuver helps prevent the development of a bladder neck contracture. Closure after inspecting the bladder for a complete adenoma removal and hemostasis, and no. 22 FR, 3 way folia catheter with a 30 ml balloon is inserted through the anterior urethra and prostatic fossa into the bladder. With the urethral catheter in place, the prostatic capsule is closed figure 41.6. A 2 to 0 chromic suture on a Circle tapered needle is used to create two running stitches. These stitches begin laterally and meet in the midline, they are first tied separately and then together to create watertight closure. 50 milliliters of water are then placed in the balloon to ensure that the catheter balloon remains in the bladder and does not retract into the prostatic fossa. The bladder is then irrigated with saline solution to ensure continued hemostasis and to test the capsular closure for leakage. A small, closed suction drain is placed via a separate stab incision lateral to the prostate and bladder on one side to prevent hematoma and urinoma formation. The pelvis is irrigated with copious amounts of normal saline solution and the rectus fascia is reapproximated with a number 1 PDS suture on it by needle in a running fashion. The skin is closed with skin staples. The drain is secured to the abdominal wall, and the urethral catheter is secured to the lower extremity. Suprapubic pro